Hi everyone, we're Krista and Tony, a couple of Australians that have taken a year off to travel the world. We have been driving up the west coast of America up to Canada in our rented camper van. In this video we head to Buckskin Gulch in Utah where we hike in 100 degree Fahrenheit heat and make the mistake of running out of water. Then to make up for it we surround ourselves with the stuff at Lake Powell which is conveniently located close by at the town of Page, right next door to the world famous Antelope Canyon. After this we head to Monument Valley and get caught in a huge sandstorm, which was pretty scary. We start this episode at the Rainbow Mountains of Peria, which we explored in our last episode, where we then drive down to Buckskin Gulch, taking about an hour and a half. There are two hikes in this area, Buckskin and Wire Pass. Both hikes link up through a series of slot canyons. Hello everyone, today we are heading to Buckskin Gulch. You excited? I think she's excited. So, it's a big canyon and lots of exciting geology. You gotta watch, gotta watch for flash floods. So you gotta check the weather report the night before and sign the register. Let's go. Flash floods are a serious business out here. Just like in this video where a few hikers in Wild Horse Slot Canyon were caught out, but luckily they all escaped unhurt. Check out the video link in the description. This hike ended up being totally in the sun, next to no shade, with soft sand in high temperatures with no phone reception. We were expecting a nice, cool, shady slot canyon, only a few kilometres into the hike. So we just kept chasing the horizon until we walked over 7 kilometres. Still walking. How many k's have we done now? 3.7, and we still have seen no slot canyon. It's a lot of soft sand. Rock formations are pretty cool. Hiking update, we're still going. Done like four kilometers now, I think. 4.8. And I can't see any slot canes on the horizon. <sighs> it's getting hot too. So these are old fossilized or solidified ancient sand dunes. Pretty amazing, huh? Nice sand dune impression. It looks like you've got like a little wave over there. I don't think it's the official wave, I think it's further south from here, but pretty amazing. This area is actually right next door to the world famous wave, yet the only way to access the wave legally is by entering a lottery system. We entered every day for five days and missed out every time, along with our $50 completely gone. If you do enter this location without a pass, you can face up to a $10,000 fine or several months in prison apparently. Whew. After six kilometers, 6.5, <laughs> we've pretty much made it. It's only now just starting to really get narrow, um, wow. but it's pretty cool. <gasps> Super nice. Yeah, how's that breeze? so nice. Yes. Like aircon. It's way cooler in these slot canyons than up. Up further above. It's like 32, 34 degrees, like over 100 Fahrenheit. But here, it's quite nice. So we're just going to climb this thing and have some lunch? Yes, I can climb and then we're gonna turn back. We're getting pretty low on water and we've nearly made it to wire pass, but apparently this is pretty much the same thing. So <sighs> I'm sure I'll Google it when I get back and realize that it's not, but <laughs> um, I've already walked about six and a half, seven kilometers. So it's 14, 14 kilometers on the way back. So in 35 degree heat, with not a huge amount of water left. Yeah, probably head back. I really don't know how to get back on. I will help you right now. <laughs> so we're just hiking back now from Slot Canyons and it is incredibly hot afternoon and we've run very low on water and the wind's completely stopped. So we thought a lot of this hike was gonna be in the canyons when it wasn't. So when you plan your hikes, really plan ahead and bring extra water, which we normally do, it's just we're running low in the van, so we're 
probably stupid. Anyway, I've only got three Ks left to go, and then we'll be back, so. It'll be all right, just a lesson for everyone. Have extra water. I just ran to the car to get juice and water, because poor Penguin. Poor Krista. Poor Krista nearly passed out. Lesson, I think I'd, I know this working in the desert. Take extra water. It's four o'clock now. We started at 11.30. Yeah, a couple of liters wasn't enough. Whew. If we were to do this again, we would just skip Buckskin and go straight to Wire Pass for the amazing slot canyons. As you can see, Buckskin was just mostly soft sand and dry heat. There were beautiful wave formations in the surrounding gullies, but not enough to justify the 14 kilometers of pain. So after we drank every liquid in the van besides the wiper fluid, we headed to Lake Powell. This is it, Lake Powell. And that's Lone Rock over there. That used to be underwater three years ago. Wow. Really? It used to be surrounded by water, not under. But all that water's gone now. It looks like they're having some serious drought issues at Lake Powell, which sucks. Lake Powell has been suffering from drought over the last few years, and levels are reaching all-time lows. A pretty unfortunate sign that our climate's changing. Yeah, not too bad. The water levels of Lake Powell have dropped to 25% capacity, and experts are saying that there is a 35% chance that they may have to shut down the hydroelectric plant next year until normal rainfall resumes. The water that's in the lake though is really clean and blue in colour, where we just spent the rest of the day swimming and enjoying the nice sandy lakeside beaches at Lone Rock. Over 3 million people visit Lake Powell in the Glen Canyon National Recreation Area every year, the average length of stay is about 4.5 days, and it's the longest stay of any federal park. So after cooling off in the waters of Lake Powell, we decided to head over to check out a campsite for the night. Just as the wind started to pick up and blast us with sand, we also noticed a few unlucky cars getting bogged, which distracted us from all the sand in our eyes. And now a huge dust storm draw through for the wind. It's crazy. You just got to see these mountains before, but now you can't. And we have more flat tents. <laughs> We're now spending the night at Wahip Campground and RV Park, and you have to pay to use the showers. We're paying 30 bucks for a piece of plot of ground, which is uneven and unprotected. Look at this poor guy's tent. It's getting smashed by the wind. Anyway, we're going to try and reverse into our little spot, but worst value for money ever. This is like 50 bucks. Yeah, 50 bucks Australian for an uneven patch of ground and uh, for the privilege of paying for a shower. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> I'd be more angry if I was this guy. Look at this guy. Oh my god, that tent's so getting so smashed by the wind. This is the campsite they've given us 37. We can't even get in there. It's all, it's all <laughs> like sealed off. This is a stitch up. So to take our minds off the fact we just spent $50 Australian for a patch of dirt that we couldn't access, we decided to get a pizza with some cliffside views of Lake Powell, and then the famous Glen Canyon Dam. Lake Powell is actually a man-made lake, which was originally dammed in 1963, taking 10 years to build, then took a further 17 years to completely fill. It provides essential water storage and electric power to multiple towns and cities throughout Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. Glen Canyon Power Plant has eight generators with a combined capacity of close to 1.3 million kilowatts. That's a lot of kilowatts. Lake Powell was named in honor of Civil War veteran John Weasley Powell, who led an expedition in wooden boats down the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon in 1869, which was a pretty long time ago. Another point of interest that's close by is Horseshoe Bend, an unfortunate new addition is you have to pay a fee to park. However, this beautiful river bend carved out by the Colorado River has some amazing viewpoints. Lake Powell starts in the town of Page and stretches back 186 miles up the Colorado River Channel. The further up you go, the thinner the river becomes, where you can find yourself getting lost in the numerous little slot canyons. This is especially fun if you plan on renting a jet ski like I did on my previous trip back in 2019. Another amazing site worth checking out if you head north up the river is Rainbow Bridge National Monument, the largest natural bridge on earth. Pretty incredible. 
This is probably the most famous site on Lake Powell next to Reflection Canyon. We gave that a miss this trip though, as the lower water levels made it harder to access these areas, plus due to all the wind the lake was pretty choppy. The next stop was the Glen Canyon Dam Visitor Centre, also known as the Carl Hayden Visitor Centre. Not only has some pretty amazing views of the dam, but it actually has some pretty decent displays on how the dam actually works, showing all the moving parts and engineering involved in its creation. Wow, and that is the dam. Funny. For a detailed overview, here is Engineer Krista. There's the dam, and there's a cross section similar to that model we just saw. Water comes in here, and where does it go? It goes down there, yep. And then what's that? That's a turbine. And what does it do? It spins the water, and then where does it go? And then what does it do? Yes, look at this, yes. engineering expert. So clever, well done. The Glen Canyon power plant generates 5 billion kilowatts per year. A coal power plant, for example, producing the same power would generate 4.5 billion kilograms of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The power generated is used across seven states and powers over 5 million homes, which is a concern if they have to turn the power plant off next year. Next stop was Antelope Canyon, where we booked a tour for $120 per person with Antelope Canyon Tours. The tours run for about 100 minutes from start to finish, where 40 of those minutes is in driving time to and from the canyon. This company is Navajo owned and operated, where the guides were very insightful, teaching us all about the local lands and Navajo traditions. You have to wear a face mask the whole time while on this tour, as this is a request put in place by the traditional owners. Our guide told us stories of how the Navajo tribe considers the canyon to be spiritual and sacred to the Navajo culture and way of life. He also reflected on the stories where these slot canyons provided refuge for his ancestors from American settlers many years ago. Tourists used to be able to walk through these canyons unguided, however due to visitors not respecting the site, leaving graffiti and rubbish, coupled with dangerous flash floods having claimed the lives of 11 tourists in the past, a guide is now mandatory. This place is a photographer's dream where around every corner you can get an incredible shot of this unique canyon system. Where around 11 to 1 p.m. is the best time to go for perfect lighting. This canyon was first blown into fame for its star appearance on the default Windows wallpaper that you might have seen on Windows 7 back in 2009. What do you think? Amazing, so worth it. So after Antelope Canyon, we jumped in the car and tried to get out of Page before the wind got any worse. However, unfortunately, it followed us. To Monument Valley. We're currently passing through the town of... Cayenta. Woo! Cayenta. Cayenta, with a K? Yes. K for cool. Wait, that's a C. So as we drove through the valley, the sandstorm intensified. Oh my god! Oh god, we're driving into a sandstorm. In the Navajo Valley! Oh. Monument Valley, everyone. Where's the monument? All I can see is stand. Terrible. Hurricane's here. Is it? I don't know. The one day of the year they have a decided to have a sandstorm. Modern nature. What should we do? Yeah. Apart from fight. Do you like sand people? This spot was actually where the famous scene from Forrest Gump was filmed, where he decided to completely give up on his run. And he wasn't even in the middle of a sandstorm, unlike us. I don't think it's cool because I can't see anything, so goodbye. <laughs> I wanted to take a photo. So after Monument Valley, we headed to Mexican Hat which is a national park about 40 minutes away from Monument Valley, so named for its Mexican hat-looking rock formation. Hola! Join us on the next episode where we explore many other amazing rock formations as we make our way up to Bridges National Park 
while traveling along some epic roads and seeing some archaeological sites from the past native Pueblo communities. Thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you in the next one.